Hey, what's going on, folks? It's Mike here, and welcome to the next lesson in the Deep Programming Language series. In this lesson, we're going to continue talking about pointers, but this time some of the pitfalls and things to watch out. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive in. So again, just a reminder of what a pointer is. If you didn't watch the previous lesson, it's this idea that when we create memory, for instance, like some integer here, and I'll go ahead and sign x equal to 7, then we think about 7 sort of being in a box here, and it's got its own memory address, usually some um, number here that's consisting of 64 bits of information to store the uh, address for where x or this symbol x uh, that we understand in programming languages where this lives here. Okay, so just a box with seven in it, or that's how we can think about it. Now the idea with pointers that we learned about is that we can have uh, integer pointers, and let me go ahead and just annotate this, by putting an asterisk here when we declare the type, and usually I prefix my variables with p if it's a pointer, and we can look at the address of x. Now the important part being that this is its own variable here, so we can give it some uh, address here, whatever that address happens to be, but what it's actually storing in its box is uh, not the value, but rather the address of whatever we point to here. So inside this box we store 0, x, f, f, 0, 0, 0, 0, a, a here. Okay, um, so this uh, actual address above here. So that was the idea with pointers. And we'll talk about some different types of pointers and even void star in the later episodes. So you learn what those types of pointers are, kind of a special uh, pointer type. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and just show you some of the things to watch out when working with pointers. And again, how D helps us avoid some of these errors. So the first thing that I wanted to go ahead and do is now that we're excited about pointers, we might be tempted to do something like this. Maybe we call some function here. I'm just going to call it func here. And we want to return a pointer from this function here. So let's just go ahead and sort of recreate this example. I'll have x here. I'll set it equal to 7. And I'll go ahead and create a pointer here, store the address of x. And, you know, maybe I do some... Uh, you know, manipulations in between here and some other code here. And eventually I need to return that pointer from this function here. Now, the first sort of red flag or the first uh, pitfall, which I'll go ahead and highlight here, is returning uh, local references. Okay. Uh, and basically what that means is if I'm returning a pointer from a function, that's something to watch out for. It's not that it's incorrect, but there are specific situations where you might want to return a pointer. But here we have to be a little bit careful. Now let's just go ahead and try to run this function and see what happens here. So for instance, let's go ahead and call uh, func here. And we're getting a pointer here. So uh, some pointer equals this function. And let's just go ahead and write out uh, that value here that's stored in the pointer. And I'll go ahead and just run this with rdmd. And, well, look at that. It works just fine. And I gave you this big spiel about how there's going to be some sort of warning here. But this should be alerting some red flags here. Because the idea that we have some function here, and I'm just going to label this as func here, and within this function, it's allocating local variables and as you've learned in programming along your journey somewhere, within the scope here, these curly braces, well, that's where x exists, and that's where p of x exists. So what exactly am I returning here if I'm returning an address to something that's not going to exist eventually? And it seems like our program worked just fine here. But again, let's try to play around with it a little bit. Okay, so our function here has x that exists somewhere p of x that exists, and, you know, maybe some other information, uh, including the return value and return address, so we know to resume our program here. Um, so let's say, you know, I'm happy with this. Uh, my program has effectively uh, passed any tests. Uh, it looks fine. But, you know, weeks later, I come in, I write some function here. I'm just going to call this, you know, uh, another function here. And we'll do some operations here. Uh, x equals 8, y equals 9, and maybe we'll come in between here and call this uh, function here. So another function is called, okay? Um, so again, um, not too much uh, crazy stuff happening uh, with our program here. Let's go ahead and just uh, run this here. Uh, again, just so you can see what's going on. Let me just compress things a little bit so you can see all of what's on the screen here. 
uh, and I'll go ahead and uh, save. And again, still seems fine here. But let's say I start to do some more interesting things here. Like, for instance, within another function, what if I write line here and say other function executing? Okay. And write line actually is doing some sort of allocation, perhaps, for this string or moving memory around. So let's go ahead and try to run this now. And now all of a sudden, that value 7 has just flipped and changed into something weird. And now we're actually seeing the problem that we talked about here for returning local references. And we can see that, well, what happens to me in memory when another function is called? Because remember, after I'm done calling func here, our first function, then I'm reclaiming that memory here with another function. And depending on what memory is allocated or what operations are here, I might have a string or something in the place of where x is and some other value where p of x is and so on. So again, what am I actually returning here? It's a tricky thing to spot, um, but luckily we have some tools here that can help us. So of course we can use our debugger to try to figure out what's going on here, uh, but there's sort of a trick that you can do here when you're returning pointers here. One is just to sort of outright ban them, all right? So uh, what we can do here is if I mark something as a safe function here, and when I compile it, it's going to exactly tell us one of the pitfalls that we have to watch out for. Cannot take the address of local x in an at safe function. So again, what's that saying is we just can't return this value here. We could still do things with uh, func here, but we need to you know, just return a uh, value or a copy of that value. So I'll just say a copy of value equals you know, whatever was in p of x here. Um, and let's just return that copy of the value. Now let's try to run it here. Um, and let's see. And oops, let's uh, double check here. So we've changed the return type here to integer. So that means here uh, for some function, let's just go ahead and make sure that we're returning an integer. And let's see if D uh, allows us to do this here. Okay, so now we'll actually just be working with uh, some uh, pointer here. And well, it looks like D is still being extra cautious here. So we really have to just, well, think about what our pattern is here. And in fact, the fix here is, well, let's just get rid of this here and just return the copy of the value or uh, by default. Again, if we're just returning uh, X, we don't even need any of that stuff here. Uh, then our program is fine here, okay? Because we're returning a copy of this value from our function. And there's no way for a resource to sort of leak here, um, as I put it in um, this other form here, right? Because you could try to do, you know, other silly things here, but again, you can't take the address of uh, a local variable here with a function when you mark it at safe. It's being as conservative as possible. Now, of course, there might be ways to sneak copies out or, uh, you know, maybe through uh, some other clever trickery, you can do that. But again, that's the sort of danger or thing to be aware of uh, that D is trying to prevent. So that's sort of one example and a first use case of at safe, uh, which is an attribute that you can put on top of functions. Uh, and we'll talk about some of these in future lessons, a little bit more about at safe, trusted, and so on. So of course, make sure you uh, subscribe or follow along otherwise so that you don't miss that. So that's sort of the first uh, pitfall that I want to talk about. This idea that we don't want these um, references to escape here. So I'll just go ahead and comment out um, uh, this, this code here. And we'll just go ahead and put the uh, fix here so that it compiles and we can proceed here. Now, some of the other things that we have to watch out for, um, which are uh, you know beyond the uh, pitfall number one, returning local references, is uh, bounds checking here. Okay, so bounds checking. So let's say that we have some array uh, of five integers, and I want to access in my integers the value seven here. Okay, so if I run this, um, well, what am I going to get here? Oh, it says it has no effect. Let's try to change this value. And it's going to tell us array index seven is out of bounds because the decompiler can see at compile time if this is five um, for the length of this array here, well, then seven is out of bounds there, right? So our second pitfall 
It's going to be uh, out of bounds errors. And again, the strength or power of this at compile time, if the language can figure it out, it'll report it. At runtime, so let's say it might not know. So let's say I have just some value n equals h here. Well, depending on the types of analyses that you run here, uh, in this case, then you'll get an exception here. Okay, then you can handle an exception uh, in the case of the D programming language, meaning that uh, we could handle out of bounds exceptions or array exceptions. Okay, and we'll talk about exceptions later. Now, if you do something like uh, const int n, okay, so where it's assigned here, then of course, const would be something uh, evaluated at compile time. So again, it is smart enough to figure out some of these things. It's just that um, in the previous case where it has n, right, there could be, um, you know, n plus equals, you know, minus equals, or whatever operations in between. So it's uh, not reporting on those, okay? Uh, it's not going to default your integer into const, okay? Um, so <laughs> that's not really, um, you know, it, it's just being a little bit uh, conservative what, what it can prove here, okay? So anyways, that's on bounds checking. Uh, I'll go ahead and leave that here. Now you can disable bounds checking in say a release build if you want. Um, but again, I generally wouldn't recommend that. One of the purposes of using this language is for the uh, safety, okay? Uh, but just a note on that, and of course, we'll touch on uh, some of those things later. All right, now some other things to be aware of, and this sort of falls in the same uh, field here, is pointer arithmetic with working with bounds. Let's go ahead and create uh, the integer example again here. And then let's go ahead and create a uh, pointer here into our integers array. Now it needs to point to an integer. So I'm just gonna have it point to the fourth one here uh, to start. And I'm going to do px plus plus, which, um, well, where we have to be careful here is uh, integer arithmetic, or I should say, sorry, uh, pointer arithmetic. Uh, and the idea is, and let me just write this out here, arithmetic. If I have a pointer into some uh, chunk of memory here, uh, and we have five integers, and my pointer is pointing over here, if I do plus plus, that's moving me one integer over, okay? If I do uh, px plus equals two, that's moving me two integers over, okay? So just keep in mind what that's doing here. If I'm pointing to the zero, one, two, three, or fourth index, and I'm moving this along here. Okay, and we're sort of extending out. You can kind of see what's happening here, R directly related to our you know out of bounds error. And then if I try to dereference my pointer, okay, uh, so let's just try to write out p of x here. Okay, then I am going to uh, get an error here. Uh, now, oops, I should make this a uh, compile. Right, pointers need to store an address, so the address here. And well, you can see we're getting some unpredictable value here, right? Arrays are initialized to uh, values uh, of zero, or let's just go ahead and make this one, two, three, four, five. Okay, just to make it very uh, predictable, or sorry, let, let's match the uh, indices here. Again, just to make it super predictable. So zero, one, two, three, four, those will be the, the values here. Uh, but if we're getting 32,765, that is um, not in line here. <laughs> okay, um, so let's go ahead and just comment out everything else again, just so you can see that uh, very clearly here, okay? Um, so um, another way to look at this, and let's just go ahead and put this in its own uh, function here, uh, void uh, arithmetic here, um, just so you can again, kind of see it's in a little bit of a clear example. And one of the solutions here, uh, for fixing our arithmetic. Okay, so we should get some sort of similar result here. Okay, some legal value. Um, one is that, you know, we're not crashing uh, necessarily because our stack, it is finding something in memory that I can write to. Now, if I try some really big number here, like 20,000, uh, now I'll get a segmentation fault, okay? Because I'm going way out of bounds, out of the segment of memory here, okay? Um, so I'll touch on segmentation faults uh, in a moment here. Uh, but one of the fixes, again, is that at safe keyword. Okay, I mentioned we'll, we'll talk about it more in this series, but it's also helpful to know that 
um, it will disallow pointer arithmetic. Okay, so that's one of the first things that you can learn in the deep programming language. Again, it's just handling some of these common errors in um, our code here um, that are you know known from languages you know where where memory safety is not uh, the default. Okay, so uh, let me just go ahead and put that as a note here, as sort of the fix here at safe. And then the fourth thing that I want to talk about here, and let's go ahead and put it in this box here, is segmentation faults or seg fault for short. Uh, and I'll give you another example of how it works here. Uh, I'm just going to comment out the arithmetic example for now so it compiles. Uh, but for this one, we're going to need to create some sort of class here. I'm just going to call it, you know, some object. And we haven't talked about classes uh, quite yet here. Okay, so I'll have to show them to you. Um, oops, and let me uh, let me just comment out this whole example here, just so we can actually compile. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and do this. Um, and you can see that this is kind of weird because I'm just defining the class within main here. Again, that's just going to be the scope here. Uh, so number four, segmentation fault. Uh, let's just go ahead and give this a field just so it's a little bit interesting. And um, this is a common one uh, that I see folks uh, run into um, when it comes to uh, sort of just understanding what's going on with our memory allocation. So if I create some object, I'm just going to call this uh, you know, object one here, and I try to access through object one, field one, and let's just set it to some uh, value here, something like this. And um, first and foremost, let's just see if this compiles. Will the compiler complain about this? Right? If I just compile it, no, it doesn't. Okay. So we don't want to forget about how to compile our code. Uh, we have our executable here, but let's try to run that executable. And now we're getting a segmentation fault. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, you know, this could be a failure to allocate memory on the heap for class. Okay. And again, we've talked a little bit about reference types um, in this series. If you've been following from start to finish, we'll talk more in depth about structs and classes as we proceed forward. But we basically haven't allocated a chunk of memory, which is effectively what I'm doing here when I say new some object. So let's go ahead and try this. Let's take one step forward here. Let's see what happens here. RDMD, uh, let's run our main, I'll hit enter and uh, voila, now it's working here, okay? Because by the semantics um, of this language, some object is what's known as a reference type, and that means that it is something that is you know, existing on the heap here, okay? Uh, because we're, by doing new, by virtue of doing new, we are allocating some memory on the heap, um, and that's what this reference type is pointing to. So this is effectively a pointer behind the scenes here. Okay, so that's why I'm that's why I'm including it in this sort of pointers uh, pitfalls uh, lesson. Just so again, you can kind of remember value types versus reference uh, types, which we talked about uh, again previously in this uh, series. All right, folks. So there you have it. There's a few different uh, pitfalls to be aware of here. Uh, so remember about reference types, classes are heap allocated, okay? So just something that we have to keep in mind. Uh, so make sure to use new, okay? That's exactly what I mean there. Uh, that's something that I'll see folks uh, struggle with a little bit um, because again, the code will compile, but it'll crash somewhere. And you know, then you'll have to investigate. Of course, you've got tools if you've been following this series to use GDB, LLDB, et cetera, that can help make this uh, easy to catch. Uh, but it's still something to be aware of. All right. Anyways, with that said, I think this lesson's uh, gone on long enough. So with that said, I just want to draw your attention to, if you're enjoying this series, you can check out courses.msha.io. I've got all of the lessons here if you'd like to follow along. Uh, the curriculum, again, they're free like these YouTube lessons. You can just watch them uh, and engage in the discussion there or, you know, wherever you're watching this. So uh, with that said, just wanted to point that out that that's a new thing uh, going on. So I hope you enjoy that. 
And folks, as always, thank you for your time and attention. I hope this exposed some new features, some cool things in the deep programming language that can make it a safer language uh, to use if you're coming from you know, a background in, say, C programming. I will talk about mem manual memory allocation and some of these things as well, which are useful and you're able to do in the deep programming language. So you know, we just have to know a little bit about some of these uh, pitfalls and where to be careful. All right, folks, with that said, thank you for your time and attention and look forward to that next lesson very, very soon.